G'day guys, so this episode is gonna be all about hot tips, tricks, and hacks for your caravan or camper. They're not specific to the Robo, so even if you don't have one of these campers, you might be able to get something out of this video. All right, so I thought we'd start with something simple, reversing. Uh, I'm no expert at all, but maybe some of these little tips will help you, especially if you're someone who struggles, because it can be one of those really frustrating things, especially if you're not confident, if you're trying to get into a tight spot, or heaven forbid, people are watching, because reversing is something that people do stand back and judge how well you're doing. The first thing to do is just relax. Try and take the temperature out of the situation. Slow and steady wins the race in this case. If you've got a four-wheel drive, pop it into low range. That really helps if you're on undulating ground or trying to get up a curb, say at a caravan park. Now, the next thing you want to do is just small corrections. You don't want to be pumping the steering wheel because that's when you'll jackknife your rig and potentially damage your car or your camper. The other thing that you want to try and do is always use your mirrors. Try and avoid looking over your shoulder Get used to using your mirrors. Now, this next tip, this is where it is. This is the best tip anyone ever told me. All right, stick your hands on the bottom half of your steering wheel. As you're reversing, if you move your hands to the right, the trailer becomes visible in the right-hand mirror. If you move your hands to the left, the trailer becomes visible in the left-hand mirror. Everything else is just practice from that point. It's also a good idea to jackknife your rig on purpose. Articulate it as much as you can. Find that point before you damage anything. See how far you can actually push it. See what the limits are. If you need to get out and double check, have a look, do that. See how far you can actually get that turned before you damage anything. Another little tip when you're reversing is if you can, get a competent spotter, talk to them over the two-way, and ask him if you're going to hit anything. A copy there, spotter. How are we looking? Um, yep, all good. Nice and slow, minor corrections, and you'll be an expert in no time. Right, so once you reverse into the spot you want, you want to have a nice level camper. There's nothing worse than rolling out of bed but it's all right if you roll into the person you're sleeping next to. So maybe keep it unlevel. Leveling wrap. Look, you can dig a hole or you can roll up onto a rock. I don't think that's a good idea because if it slips off, yeah. they're pretty inexpensive, okay? They're 20, 30 bucks. Stick it under your wheel, drive onto it. Most campers and caravans have like a um, spirit level on the drawbar, ours is no different, although the way that that one's been installed, it's not actually sitting flush, so that's useless. You can go to the app store and just get a bubble level, and that's all I use. I just bubble level on my phone, stick that on the drawbar, and then I'll drive up and Miranda will spot and let us know when we're level. Just don't run them over. Stop. So once you're level, just make sure you chop the wheel so you don't roll off. Right, so the leveling ramp obviously just levels your camper out left to right. To get front to back level, you just use your jockey wheel obviously. Now, before you unhitch, make sure that your wheel is sufficiently chocked and your handbrake is on nice and tight. They're stabilizer legs, they're not lifting legs, so you don't want to use them to do any hard work to level your camper out. You can within reason, but there's gearing in there, and if you overload them, you're gonna damage that. So I only ever use these just to stabilize the rig. <laughs> the 
zipping on your awning canvas can be quite a challenge sometimes, especially if you're short ass like me. Piece of string, tie that to the end of the zip, makes it heaps easier. We drink the water straight out of our tanks, so I fitted an inline filter. I've got a Best filter, and it just uses the 12mm John Guest push fittings. Super easy install. I've got it coming straight out of the water pump, so every single drop of water that we pull out of the tanks is filtered, including the shower rows, which is a little bit of a waste, but it allows the, uh, the hot water to be filtered as well, and we use that for cooking, and I also use that for my coffee in the morning. So if I can get a preheated water in my coffee pot it means I get my morning coffee that much quicker which is important as far as I'm concerned. The poly tanks on this camper they kind of they give the water a little bit of a plasticky taste. This filter completely removes that taste. Uh, it's an activated carbon filter with nano silver as well so it's meant to sort of remove all the nasties, bacteria, viruses, all that sort of stuff from the water. When it comes to filling your tanks Grab yourself a food grade hose. I'll also use an inline filter on this as well. I'll just get a cheapie from BCF Anaconda. They're about 40 bucks, something like that. That filter is probably not necessary if you're filling up from home, but when you're out in the road, you just want to make sure. So people's opinions on this differ. When we get back from the trip, I'll always empty the tanks. I'll leave the bungs off and the filler caps open just to get positive airflow and let any extra moisture evaporate away. I'll also, Come down under here and I'll undo all these points and disconnect them just to allow that to dry out because you don't want algae building up in all your water pipes or your tanks. I also make sure I drain the hot water boiler as well. Right, so it's no secret that storage is a premium in camper trailers and caravans. So I'm just gonna quickly run through what we've done to maximize our storage capacity. We picked up these storage containers from Big W and that fits all of our clothes. We got one each. It's a great way to keep your clothes organized and out of the way. And if you fold them properly, it's surprising how much stuff you can fit in there. If it doesn't fit in there, it doesn't come. With the exception of the winter jackets, which live underneath this seat here. The fifth one is for all of our toiletries. And when we pack up the camper, they just get stored down here on the floor. Oh man, that bacon smells good. So we removed the table from the Robbo. We found that we didn't really sit in here very often. We've got a, uh, a collapsible portable table and we spend most of the time out there anyway. If it's raining and we wanna come inside, we can just bring that table in here. And what that allows us to do is when we pack up we fill the floor up, we store everything in here. So you got your, your solar panel, your collapsible tables, your awning canvas, sidewall canvas, all the pillows, and then obviously the cushions get packed on top of that as well. We removed the back cushion and the corner cushions as well. Like I said before, we don't sit in here that often. And when we do, missing these cushions, it's not a big deal. In this bottom drawer, We've got seven, seven full-size microfiber towels. Like these are a great space-saving option, okay? These are New Life Simply Living microfiber towels. Full disclosure, we do have a discount code and affiliative marketing with these guys. If you wanted to purchase any of these towels, just follow the link in the description down below. Like I say, we've got seven towels in here, all right? Perfect way to save space. How often can you get seven towels inside one little drawer? Having a drawer system in the cruiser as part of our setup has been a great addition. We've managed to remove a fair bit of stuff from the camper, increasing the storage in the camper and moving it to the car. We've got all our tools and spare parts in one drawer and all our recovery gear in the other. Now, just be mindful, it does add a fair bit of weight to your vehicle. So just take into account your GVM limits. Make sure you don't go overweight. 
So now that all the tools and spare parts are out of the camper, it's freed up a lot of space. This drawer now, which used to have our tools and spare parts, is now our pantry. And you can fit a surprising amount of food in here, all your non-perishable items. There's not much in there at the moment. We're only on a little uh, quick weekend trip, but when we did our big trip, this thing was chockers and you can Tetris a lot of stuff in there. Okay, the second fridge slide. We don't run two fridges in the camper. We run the second fridge in the back of the car. So again, you can fit a fair bit of stuff in here if you don't have a fridge. This is where we store the porta potty, um, the ground sheet, solar blanket. There's also my fishing gear. And just a spare container. Now this container is full of all the uh, the porta potty accessories, um, the chemicals, the toilet paper. There's um, cleaning products, shampoo, conditioner, um, dishwashing detergent, mm, spare soda stream bottles. There's all sorts of stuff in there. So if you don't run a second fridge in your camper, you can really fill up this to increase your storage capacity. Stone guard buddies, they're another great way of increasing your storage. Just be aware that if you're hitting gravel roads and you don't have stone stompers or rock tamers, they will get smashed with gravel. And regardless, they're gonna get full of dust. We use them for uh, hiking boots and snorkeling gear and swimming gear and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, great little addition. I fitted some pole carriers to the boat loader. The top one fits all the awning poles. It's a really tight squeeze, but they do fit. And the bottom one's got all the window poles and the, uh, the supports for the second bed. I also store my fishing rods in there. Not the best place for fishing rods, let's be honest, because they probably will get damaged. Uh, we get a lot of questions actually about how we fitted them. These are the Kamek brand, and they basically, they come with all the brackets that you need. And they just, as you can see, bolt down to the boat loader. And that's it. Now that the poles are removed from the camper, we store a lot of stuff in here. We got the guy ropes and pegs, the muck mat, collapsible broom, fire tripod, soda stream, and on the other side, we've got the clothesline and the kids' camping chairs. Now we just have a big mess on the mat. So another way to expand your storage capacity is get some spare wheel bags. Uh, I relocated the number plate so I could get two bags. You put whatever in it, you know, uh, bottles, cans, rubbish, wet towels, wet boots, snorkeling gear, whatever. This one has Miranda's Thunder Bucket in it. When the spare wheels come down, they rest on the floor. And if you've got the wheel bags, you can't really access the bag. So get yourself a couple of chains, keep them up off the ground. This is actually Camo's job. He's avoiding coming on the camera at the moment. Come on, buddy, come finish your job. Here's another bonus tip. If you've got young kids, get them involved in the setup. There you go, buddy. You remember what to do? No. Goodbye now. Yeah, mate. The other bonus of keeping them off the floor is you can use this as a bit of a storage area to put whatever, your fishing gear, your tackle box. We can put the Ziggy up here. We sometimes put the solar panel there if we're hooked up to power at a caravan park or if we're only doing a quick overnighter. Um, spare tables, whatever. Just creates a nice little platform for you to put some more stuff on. So another great little addition we made to the camper is the shower tent. This is much better than the one that came with the Robbo. Super easy to set up. Unzip it. I did a little video on how I installed this. Just go through our playlists or we'll put a link in the description below. The main advantage with having this, other than it being easy to set up and put away, is that it doesn't really obstruct 
your pantry. If you want to get in there, fold it out of the way. The other one clipped to the tent and you couldn't get in there. Sometimes your poles can become a little bit sticky. You got a dirty mind, woman. Look at her, hey, lady muck over there. If you suffer from sticky poles, <laughs> get yourself some silicon spray and give them a squirt. It's a great lube, that one. Oh, that went south. Try the connections. They've been known to come out, especially when you're hitting the corrugations for hundreds and hundreds of Ks. I've had to do multiple track side repairs. When you put them in, Wax some tape around them, that'll hold them nice and secure. I did a lithium battery upgrade in the camper and as part of that install, I also fitted a, uh, a smart shunt. And that's a great way of finding exactly what your state of charge is. You can see all your ins and your outs, your currents in, your currents out, the whole lot. I did a little video on that smart shunt installation. So again, go through our playlists or we'll put a, a link in the description down below. Depending on your power requirements, the 120 watt panel that came with the Robo, it's probably not going to be enough. And let's face it, <laughs> when you're at camp, you're normally parked under a tree. So you don't always have the opportunity to face that towards the sun. So in my opinion, that's not a big enough panel. Get yourself a portable panel. We've got a 260 watt um, XTM portable panel. I've actually got it hooked up to the second battery in the cruiser at the moment because that battery's just gone cactus. Um, the fridge isn't running at the moment, so I'm trying to run the fridge in the cruiser off the solar panel, which is working at the moment. Need to replace that battery. This panel, it's it's actually quite heavy. There's probably some better options out there. I think Kickass does a 300 watt panel and it's a lot lighter. Uh, just make sure if you do run a portable panel, you remove the regulator because the DC charger inside the camper has its own solar input. So obviously the advantage with a portable panel is you can chase the sun all day to top those batteries back up. And also if you're finding that that's not enough to replenish your batteries, get yourself an Anderson splitter. Okay, so then you can join multiple panels together. Connecting two panels together, the 120 watt panel that's on the boat loader and also the 260 portable panel out the front there. As you can see we're around 17 amps with both panels connected. I'll just disconnect the 260 watt panel, the big one, and that'll drop straight down to three, four amps. So the little panel's only putting in three or four amps, that's just by itself. Just plug in the big one, and that jumps straight back up to uh, 16 and a half, 17 amps. Disconnect the little one, and that'll drop down to 13. So two different wattage panels connected together, not the most efficient way of running your solar system, but combination of the two, you'll get more current back into your batteries. Just wanted to quickly touch on that. Oh man, time for the hat to go on. So I've been bestowing the advantages of rock tamers. In the last trip that we did, I had egg on my face because uh, I smashed the rear windscreen. If you get rock tamers, don't forget to install the mesh insert. I just wanted to quickly talk about the hot water system because some people have trouble getting that operational. Uh, there's just a couple of things that I do and we've never had a problem getting that running. When you fill your tanks, turn your water pump on and open all your taps, your hot, your cold sink taps and your shower rows. Get all the air out the line and let that boiler fill up with water. The first thing I'll do when I get to camp is I'll open the flue, okay? That's one of the first things I do. And then I'll turn on the gas bottle. Now, if you do that, make sure that the tap inside the camper is switched off because you don't want gas bleeding out into the environment. And then next thing I do, before we've even opened up, I'll come to the switch panel and make sure I turn on that hot water switch there. And then when I finally venture into the camper, once it's open, the next thing I'll do is I'll turn that tap on and let it run for about 30 seconds before I turn the switch on. 
then I'll jump out of the camper and I'll come around and I'll actually put my hands up against that flue because you can, you can generally feel the heat and know whether it's lit. If you can't feel that heat, go back inside the camper, turn that switch off and then on again. I've only ever had to do that twice and then we're good to go. Sometimes you can't avoid folding your camper up when it's wet, but as soon as you get home, make sure you open it up. The last thing you want is it folded up with wet canvas because that's when you'll get mold. That's the last thing you want. Even if it's gonna be raining for the next week, open it up. As soon as you get that sunny day and everything's dry, that's when you fold it up. But also, get yourself some moisture absorbing crystals. You'd be amazed at how much extra moisture these will pull out of the canvas, even when you think it's bone dry. You can also get some moisture absorbing pads. I'll throw them in for good measure as well. Get yourself a jerry can for your wastewater. Saves you getting splashed feet. And when it comes to emptying it, it's a lot easier to tip out than a bucket. And it's strapped onto the boat rack really easy. Lowering the boat rack can be a bit of a challenge sometimes. First thing you want to do before you open it up is clip on a rope so you can pull on when it's time to pack it away. Now, releasing these locking mechanisms here is what allows you to lower it down. MDC has a masterclass by where they get you to remove one of these pins. To unlock the other one and hold it there. Personal opinion, I think that's a really bad idea. The alternative is, as you're pulling it from the other side, get someone to release both of these locks, which can also be a bit challenging. So I'm super happy that I found out about this little hack. Get yourself some bungee cords. Wrap them around the gas struts, and then a couple of times around the lower half of the locking arm and then back up to the gas strut on the other side. And basically, it's gonna release automatically. Check it out. Whoa. When it's time to bring it the whole way down, make sure you get yourself a pole to bring it down nice and slow. You don't want it to come crashing down, damaging something or injuring yourself. Super easy, one person job. Fridge compartment gets super hot, especially on a 40 degree day when it's closed up and you've only got these two passive vents. So I installed a 12 volt Sirocco computer fan to try and evacuate some of that extra hot air. There was already a light and light switch installed here. I removed that, used the existing wiring, fitted a new switch and the fan onto one of those vents. Now, I haven't measured exactly how much efficiency I've gained from the fridge, but when it's on, you can definitely feel hot air being drawn out of that fridge compartment. While we're on the subject of the fridge, we run the Dometic CFX 95 litre. Now, this is just a protective cover. For whatever reason, these fridges don't come with an insulated cover. So I just got some insulating sheets, cut them to size and fit them in between the cover and the fridge all the way around. Again, haven't measured what the efficiency increase is, but it's gotta be doing something. Should probably also mention, we got the 50 litre section as the freezer and the 45 litre section as the fridge. As far as the temperatures we have set, negative six on the freezer, four degrees on the fridge. Obviously, the colder you have it set, the more energy you're gonna use. I find that those settings, we're only using one and a half to two amps per hour on average in a 24 hour period. Any colder, use more energy. When we're driving, I'll chill it right down the freezer to let's say negative 10 while the vehicle's charging the batteries. And then when we get to camp, I'll reset that to negative six. Variety of Tempex is a good idea. These two came with the camper 
and they're good for most situations. Threaded tent peg, it's great for compact ground. And the sand peg, well, it's good for sand. Lunch lady Doris, have you got any grease? Yes, yes we do. Then grease me up, woman! Okie dokie. Get yourself a grease gun. If you're doing hundreds of kilometers of corrugations and uh, dusty roads or you're doing water crossings, it's a good idea to get some nice fresh grease into those pivot points. The Robo's got five grease nipples all together, two on each suspension arm and one on the DO35 hitch. Oh, and don't cheap out on grease. Get yourself some good quality high temperature grease. It's also a good idea every now and then to pop off the dust cap on your stabilizer legs and get a little bit of grease on those uh, gears in there. So we were getting really uneven tire wear. First thing to check is make sure your pressures are correct and you're packing your camper nice and evenly. The problem that we had was our camber was out and also was our wheel alignment. Relatively straightforward to adjust and check. Much easier to pay someone to do it, but it's actually quite straightforward to be able to do it yourself. Give you a quick little demo. All right, first thing you wanna do is jack your camper up so you can freely spin the wheels. And you want to make sure that it's nice and level as well. Just make sure it's nice and secure so it's not going to fall down and roll on top of you. The next thing you want to do is you want to climb underneath and you want to undo these two suspension bolts here and here. Um, they're done up to 190 newton meters so you're going to have to really lean on them. Once they're loosened, all you need to do <laughs> is adjust these. You see this funny lopsided washer looking thing here? That's a cam bolt. So as you rotate that, that cam presses against the housing here, which adjusts the whole suspension arm. The inside one, adjusts the alignment. To check your adjustment, you just need a straight edge. Make sure you've got it flush against the wheel. Make sure that it's uh, not uneven because of the, the pattern of the side biters or any lettering. And then what you do is you just measure from the chassis to your straight edge and make sure it's even on both sides. And that's it for your alignment. The outside one adjusts the camber. With your camper, like I said before, make sure your camper is level. If your camper is unlevel because you've got one side jacked up and not the other, and you adjust your camber, it's gonna be out. Make sure you spend a little bit of time and getting your camper dead level. Get a spirit level, same deal. Make sure it's nice and even against the tire. And then you make your adjustments until you got that bubble in the middle. All right, well, with a little bit of to and fro I got there in the end. It'd be much easier to pay someone to do it. Um, but if you're capable and confident and willing to give it a go, you probably save yourself some money. Uh, one thing I will say is you need a little bit of tension on the camber bolt, otherwise it'll just keep dropping down. You can actually get a specific tool that fits over here. Um, I don't have one. I was just using socket and wrench and also Every now and then I found it easier to adjust it by using the tag there as well. Last of all, you want to do those bolts up to 190 newton meters. Bonus tip, get yourself a torque wrench. If you need to do a trackside wheel replacement, make sure you use the correct torque settings. And if you're doing like hundreds of k's of corrugations, it's a good idea to check um, your wheel nuts anyway. Check your nuts. Man, 190 newton is a lot. Yeah. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Hope you got something out of this episode. If you've got any tips or hints, whack them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. Uh, just one last bonus tip. Sit down, relax, enjoy yourself. Make those priceless memories with the family while you can. Our kids are still young, so that's what this is all about, building the foundations of a good childhood. Cheers. 
Catch you out there. Daddy, Cam's annoying me! No, I'm not, Jacqueline! <laughs> there you are! See ya.